Moving along to case planning. My opinion, case planning should follow the risk need responsivity model using uh, trauma informed assessment that's dynamic and fluid. Case plan should target criminogenic needs plus assess the individual's unique specific responsivity needs and their interactions between these two categories. I, be, I, my, believe that all reentry case planning should be developed in phases so that people can decompress from the incarceration experience if they have been in prison. Trauma informed case planning takes into account the overall history of trauma that a person experienced before, during, and after incarceration. That's important. Pettis Davis had a study that they published in 2020 that showed that 47 to follow people for eight months after prison, that 47% of the individuals experience at least one traumatic uh, event post incarceration. Following up with Pettis Davis, they also proposed, which I believe is very helpful, a multi phase trauma intervention. They put forward three phases, which is starting when the person's before they're released, when they're released, and then post, uh, post release, which I think is very important. Treatment, moving along to with treatment, there is, uh, for the youths, there's a meta-analysis was done by Wilson in 2000, that published in 2018. Wilson followed, uh, reviewed 29 studies, and six were for justice-involved youth and 24 for at-risk children. 24 of the studies were, um, were random controlled trials, which is many people consider the gold standard in research. The outcomes are mixed, um, slightly positive for justice involved youth and positive for at risk youth. Wilson looked at um, trauma focused cognitive behavior therapy, EMDR or eye movement desensitization reprocessing, cognitive reprocessing therapy, and three or four other um, treatments. They found that trauma focused CBT was the strongest. For adults, uh, Covington, Stephanie Covington and her group have been involved in trauma informed treatment and, and trauma treatment for a number of years. They were, originally were developing curriculums for women and incarcerated women and have moved on to also develop the curriculums for men. Research into Covington's programs have uh, included a study by Dr. Messina and uh, she evaluated men and women and found that the program's effects on mental health aggression and anger in outcomes were good. And particularly for those with the highest level of trauma, some of these, if not all of them, I believe, Dr. Messina would have to say this herself, I believe were in uh, the maximum security uh, sections of the prisons. Another aspect of Covington and Messina's work was that they found positive findings in their research for the use of peer facilitators for male and female prisoners. So you can develop with certain people who are still incarcerated to make them facilitators. So that can help with the cost effectiveness, uh, cost of the program. Another well-known uh, curriculum is seeking safety, manualized, started initial research was with uh, incarcerated women also, as, as was Covington's. And they have, um, they have really, you know, they, they're, they're also been around for quite some time and have good research to support their use. So sequencing of what I'm trying to get here, sequencing of R&R &R trauma assess informed assessments is, you want to conduct a general risk needs assessment in a trauma informed manner being sensitive to possible triggers. If the individual responds positively to trauma risk items in the, in the uh, general uh, recidivism instrument, you then move to a more focused instrument such as the uh, ITQ or International Trauma Questionnaire. I recommend giving the person feedback about the general assessment findings and if, it if, not, if they took it, the I2Q results. And of course, you present that in a trauma-informed manner. 
If the person has symptoms of PTSD or complex PTSD, I recommend offering trauma treatment services that are voluntary. Thank you.